Hey, since the big announcement last week, I've talked to lots of you guys about the brand new Giant Leap coaching program, and plenty of you have asked some super good questions. First off, yes, Giant Leap is a real one-on-one coaching program with me personally. If you're familiar with, say, the 10 Plus coaching program, which is a full strategic plan of action, this is kind of like a one plus. We identify your big sticking point between you and success, and we hit it with a big heavy hammer. We do not stop until you've conquered it and are on the way to real world results. And yes, you might be in a relationship with a woman already or not. Either way, we'll tackle that one big issue. It can even be career related or have to do with your social circle. You don't even necessarily have to put your finger on what the roadblock is just yet. But together, we'll clear it. Results are guaranteed. And yes, it's affordable. And oh yeah, by the way, I did have Neil Armstrong in mind when I named it. For sure. (laughs) So it all starts with an exploratory call. It's free of charge, won't cost you a dime. And we'll figure out together whether this is the right track for you. Mountaintoppodcast.com front slash leap, L-E-A-P. That's mountaintoppodcast.com front slash leap. Live from the mist and shrouded mountaintop fortress that is X and Y Communications Headquarters, you're listening to the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. And now, here's your host, Scott McKay. Greetings, gentlemen. Welcome again to yet another episode of the world famous Mountaintop Podcast. My name is Scott McKay, at Scott McKay on both Twitter and Clubhouse, real Scott McKay on Instagram. You can find all the YouTube goodies by searching my name on YouTube, S-C-O-T-M-C-K-A-Y. The website is mountaintoppodcast.com, and I invite you to join us on Facebook at the fast-growing group for men who you know have a good sense of humor and want to get better with the women in their lives, further their careers, and all that good stuff. That is, of course, as always, the Mountain Top Summit on Facebook. With me today is a new friend of mine. We were chit-chatting before we hit record on this. She's very charming. You're going to like her immediately. Her name is El Hari, and she is from Florida. And her brand is Be With Your Twin Flame. And she is the author of a book on the said subject called Twin Flames Exposed, which you can get on Amazon. Why most of what you think you know about twin flames isn't true and how understanding the truth is the key to being with your twin flame in this lifetime. Well, I got to tell you guys, I know next to nothing about twin flames going into this. So if what little I know isn't true, then we're all going to learn a whole lot together on this show. So without anything further, Elle, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy you're here, too, because you know what? It's been a long and arduous search for the right person to be my co-host for a show on this topic. Now, see, I learned about this concept of twin flames relatively recently, and I searched and searched for the right person to come and give expert advice on what twin flames are all about and describe it to us in detail, and not until you showed up on my computer screen, courtesy of your publicist, was I able to find the right person to talk about this? So as these guys know, L, I'm really generally pretty practical. I like to talk about things that work and things that don't. I like to talk about men and women attracting each other in the most natural way that makes the most sense. A lot of times when guys read my work or listen to these shows or do coaching with me in person, they end up saying to themselves or even to me directly out loud, you know, this is really common sense. This all really just is so logical once I think about it. But I also dabble in areas kind of further afield in the universe uh, where my curious mind takes me. Some of these guys know I'm into lucid dreaming and things like that. So when I discovered this idea of twin flames, I was absolutely wrapped with attention I was giving to it. I thought it was just fascinating. And so what I would like you to do, since you're the expert here and I'm learning, because obviously everything I think I know about this isn't true, please talk to us about what twin flames are. Okay, gladly. Uh, So twin flames are two bodies that share the same soul. So two physical people. And like any one of us, we we all have and are a twin flame. So our soul, we always share our soul with someone else when we're incarnated into the physical 3D world. 
Okay, well, that was a very basic answer. Is this synonymous with soulmate or is that something completely different? It's it's often misconstrued and used synonymously, but it's completely different, actually. So that's the first thing I thought I knew that I didn't know. No, right. I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be the only one. Um, so twin flames, they are two bodies with one soul. A soulmate is just like it says, it's a mate of your soul. So it's another soul that resonates with your soul. And um, souls are just energy and everything and everyone is energy. So every single person or actually every single being in your life resonates with your soul in some way or the other. So every single one of them is a soulmate to one degree or another. So we can have family members as soulmate, friends as soulmates, lovers as soulmates, and even pets as soulmates. Fantastic. And I think most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, realize that, hey, you know what, we could have more than one soulmate. But when you're talking about a twin flame, that is absolutely by definition limited to one other person in this world, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Now who discovered this concept? Because I didn't hear about it before like a year ago. Am I just, you know, living under a rock or what? I mean, how long have people been discussing this thing? Well, I think the first documented thing about Twin Flames was Plato. He documented Twin Flames. That would be a long time ago. Yeah, so whatever year that was. <laughs> um, you know. I'm not even sure he knew what year that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he did. He, he, he wrote about Twin Flames. So that's the first, I think, one we really uh, we have any record of. So how could it have been lost to history for so long? I mean, isn't this sort of important? It is important, but you see, it's actually, it's really, it's just a label. It really isn't important or significant um, to anyone's everyday life until they experience the twin flame journey. Now, in every lifetime that we have, we have crossed paths with our twin flames, including this one. And there's so many people out there who are married to their twin flames right now, who grew up next door to their twin flames, who work with their twin flames, and they don't even know their twin flames. And that's fine and perfect. They don't have to know that. What happens is, though, at some point when the soul is ready, the soul recognizes itself within the physical body of the other twin flame. And at that point, that's what starts what's called the twin flame journey. And so at that point, that's when people tend to want to know what's going on. And so that's when it's important to realize, oh, that's what we're doing. We're twin flames. But until that happens, um, there, you don't really even need to know if you're twin flames. So the obvious question that comes to mind is with this big wide world of ours, L, and 8 billion of us out there, this mm -hmm. sounds like the ultimate search for the proverbial needle in a haystack. So is this something that's divinely inspired God to sort of make sure we run into this person and that we're conveniently juxtaposed so it happens whether we know it or not? Because you did say we are destined to meet this person. Whether we recognize them as twin flame or not, that would be correct, right? Yes, that's exactly correct. Um, yes, and it is divinely guided. The soul, actually, we're all a soul, and our soul is actually orchestrating everything in our lives. And our soul is, you know, it's an energy. It's an energy and frequency of vibration that's unique to, that we share with no one and nothing else, actually, in the entire history of the cosmos, other than our twin flame. So every coupling of, tw of twin flames have their own unique um, soul vibration. And due to um, universal laws, um, like the law of attraction, law of vibrancy, we magnetize in things, people, situations, everything is energy. We magnetize in other energy that resonates with our soul energy into our physical lives. And so that includes, obviously, our twin flame, because our twin flame matches our, our energy of vibration exactly. Now, a lot of guys are listening to this, obviously. In fact, this is a show for men. And uh -huh. I know instinctively that a lot of guys are hearing what you're saying, kind of getting a feel for this topic and thinking like, this is chick stuff. This is something women like to read about for their entertainment in Cosmopolitan magazine. It's like the daily horoscope or something. But you claim there are scientific ways we can know that this is really a thing. This isn't just some fad that women are talking about for fun. This is something very real. So I'd like for you to discuss to these guys, you know, throw it out on the table for them, L, the real evidence for this being a factual event. Not only do twin flames exist, but that we're indeed destined to meet this person. Go ahead. 
Okay, sure. So, um, well, first of all, I can I can attest just from all of the men um, students that we have that are experiencing the twin flame journey <laughs> um, that come in. So there's there's that evidence which I've seen with my own physical senses. But really, so it's twin flames. It's about energy. So everything and everyone is energy. I mean, we know that that has been scientifically proven. So, and our souls, our essence of who we are, is energy. It's actually the strongest energy next to source energy um, in the entire universe. And so um, studying the twin flames, we're talking about the twin flames is really, um, it comes down to physics because we're here when we live in the physical world in every lifetime, right? The physical world that we live in, it's the third dimension. It's one of duality and opposites. And you can see that where we have everything is, is an opposite. So we have up and down, hot and cold, in and out, light and dark, good and bad. That kind of paradigm of duality only exists in the 3D physical world. When our soul incarnates here into a lifetime when we're born, our soul being energy itself needs to assimilate energetically into that same paradigm. So it needs to make two opposites of itself. And in energetic terms, those opposites are called polarities. And so there's one polarity in the physical body of one twin flame and the other polarity within the physical body of the other twin flame. Fascinating. And every engineer is doing cartwheels of joy out there. <laughs> oh, really? Have you ever experimented with something called Curlian photography? Yes. Well, I haven't, I haven't done it myself. I've had it done to me. Like I've had the picture taken. Is that the one right. with Laura? Yes. I had a feeling you'd be into that. Yeah. Curlian photography is something I haven't heard about in ages, probably since I was a kid, but apparently you can photograph the energy of your soul mm -hmm. with a real actual objective photograph. Yes. Yeah, I just figured you might be into that. Something for these guys to Google. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. All right. So you talk about twin flames as being someone we could fall in love with and have a relationship with. Now, see, to me, I'm thinking I'd rather fall in love with my soulmate and have a relationship with that person because there's someone who complements my soul. And I'll tell you why I feel this way. I would drive myself nuts. I mean, people who are too much like each other tend to absolutely grate on each other's nerves. So, I mean, that's the thought that came to my head. I mean, correct me if I'm completely way off there. Yeah, no, you're correctly right. If you're talking about a physical relationship with someone, I always tell someone, if you want a normal, physical, happy relationship with someone, you want a soulmate. You're not looking for your twin flame for that. But see, the twin flame journey is not about a physical relationship. Yes, it very most commonly starts out that way. That's the catalyst to the journey. See, the whole point of the journey is to see the polarity of your energies that I just talked about. One um, twin flame has one polarity. The other twin flame has the other. And when the journey starts, those two polarities build up. And they build up and manifest as a push and pull. So as it builds up, the buildup part going up is amazing. And the twin flames are stuck together like magnets. They've, like, they've never felt so close with anyone, a connection with anyone like that. But then they reach a tipping point and the polarities begin to manifest as push-pull. So one twin flame pulls away from the other as the other one's pushing towards the other one in tandem. Right. So you can see how it'd be like almost impossible for physically them to be together if one's pushing while the other one's pulling all the time. Right. And so the twin flame journey, though, the whole point of it is it's a journey of self-love because that push-pull energy, that's actually the denied shadow energy of ourselves. And it's fear-based energy. And so the twin flames sh show each other their opposite polarized energy that they, they would otherwise not see in themselves. And then when you see that every part of yourself, including that denied shadow part of yourself, that fear-based energy part of yourself, you're able to then identify it and understand it and then accept it without judgment. And that's actually how you love yourself on the deepest level possible. And that's actually the point of this journey is self-love. It's a journey of getting to know yourself as a soul. It's not, it's not about a physical relationship. It doesn't take place on the physical level, if that makes sense. Ever. I mean, it starts out that way, right? So because on the physical level, the 3D world, the duality, that is fear-based energy. So our 3D physical world is, is a fear-based energetic paradigm. But in order to break the polarities, the push-pull, we need to rise up out of that fear-based paradigm. And what we're doing when we are noticing the push-pull 
polarized fear-based energy within ourselves when the twin flames you know work with those energies what they're actually doing when they accept them without judgment when they love that part of themselves that fear-based energy becomes transmuted or alchemized into love energy and so the soul is love energy it comes from the fifth dimension it's not originally from the third dimension which is why it needs to make two polarized opposites of itself to incarnate here and assimilate into the third dimension the fifth dimension isn't fear-based. It's all love. That's really what the journey is about, is alchemizing the fear-based energy within yourself into love-based energy. So that's where the band, the fifth dimension, got their name, right? Because it's all love. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm dating myself there, Elle. Okay. You probably had no idea what I was even talking about just then. All right. I don't really know who they are, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> Yet another thing to Google. I'll put that in the show notes too. Okay. All right. So before we talk about the practicalities of this, which I can't wait to hear, I have a few house cleaning questions. Sure. All right. So indeed, if you married and procreated with your twin flame, wouldn't that be kind of like inbreeding your soul? I mean, what would the children be like? No, because you know, you're, you're the same soul because we have many people who have kids with their twin flames. Remember the children part of it is physical. Inbreeding part would be would be on the physical level. Well, are these children special in any way? Are they different? No, everyone's special and different. But oh, no, come on, humor me. <laughs> sure. Um, no, see, here's the thing. So the twin flames are the same soul, and everyone, um, every group of every soul comes in part of a group of soul called a soul family. Mm -hmm. And so that usually consists of family members in every lifetime. And, and so you incarnate with the same group of souls, same soul family incarnates in every lifetime together. So you're always with the same souls in every lifetime and you're part of the same soul family. And so because you and your twin flame are the same soul, even though physically, you know, all these souls in the same soul family might not ever cross paths with each other in the same lifetime. For example, one twin flames, like parents may not ever meet the other twin flames parents. But yet, because the two twin flames are the same soul, those other souls of both those sets of parents are part of that shared soul, soul family. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And see, I was hoping this had something to do with star children, because that's a fascinating concept to me also. Like these children who can just see more deeply into much more metaphysical things than normal human beings can. I was hoping you know, selfishly, because I thought it would be incredibly fascinating that somehow these children were the product of having both poles of their soul united so that they were more powerful within. But that's not a thing, is it? No, because I mean, it is a star children are a thing for sure. Yeah, but not because of that. No, their soul is just it's new souls incarnating whenever we have children, right? It's right. not like a part of our soul. They're separate okay. souls. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So other questions. Mm -hmm. Do twin flames have to have the same birthday? No. Are they born at the same time? No. Why not? I don't know. It just it, they could. It doesn't matter. In fact, one of the common um, physical traits about twin flames is a pretty large and significant age difference. That's very common among twin flames. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. If I have an identical twin, mm -hmm. is that my twin flame? No. No. Again, why not? Because identical, they're only identical physically. They're not the same soul. Ah, I kind of saw that one coming. <laughs> Man, this sounds so confusing. So getting into the practical piece of this, how do I even begin this journey, L? How do I know who I'm looking for? I mean, obviously, I'm looking for myself, but not physically. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for this polar side to my energy. It sounds so complicated to try to recognize this person. How do I know who I'm looking for, and how do I know when I've found this person? Or are they going to find me first, and I'm just too boneheaded to figure that out? Yeah, you don't look for your twin flame. You won't find them that way. They'll just come in, and I mean, like I said, you could know your twin flame. You could be married to your twin flame. You could already, you could have grown up next door to your twin flame, You and you don't know. The only way you know is once your soul has decided to have soul recognition recognize itself within the physical body of your twin flame. And this happens on the deepest, deepest subconscious level. There's no like aha moment when it happens. You don't even feel it physically. It's just when the soul is ready, it kind of like wakes up to itself. And then at that point, those polarities kick in and the buildup is amazing and intense. But then all of a sudden they start manifesting as push pull. And it's at that point when they start manifesting as push pull that you will know. 
Well, actually, the push twin flame will know. The pull twin flame generally doesn't really isn't as conscious because the push twin flame, the pull twin flame pulls away physically, leaving the push twin flame there. Like what just happened? Like the whole rug has been pulled out from under them. They're very confused. Um, they're very obsessive because it's fear based energy and fear based energy is of the mind and it controls the mind. And it's also addictive. Fear based energy is also addictive energy. And so their mind is controlled by this energy that's pushing out towards their physical form of their twin flame. So they're just obsessed with their twin flame. And they're also in a lot of physical pain most of the time because they have what's called core wound pain. This is either in their heart, solar plexus, or sacral chakra. And it feels like either like a tightening or a twinging or like a, kind of like a fluttering all the way on a spectrum, all the way to feeling like you've been completely disemboweled. So it can range anywhere between that. And so it's very painful. And so uh, it, they know, you know, it's something different. It's different than any other breakup or heartbreak you might have. It's when you really can't get over, you know, someone who broke up with you and you can't move on and you just can't focus on anything else. You can't function. It's it's very challenging to even function like normal. But wouldn't it feel like a part of yourself has died? Yes. It, yeah. It could feel like, yes, exactly. It feels like a part of yourself has been, like your soul has been ripped from your body. Actually. Okay. So the Catch 22 here in my mind. And again, remember, just like your book says, everything I think I know about this is probably wrong. So (laughs) if the person who is my twin flame isn't awake to this notion at all, and they think it's all a bunch of BS, does that scuttle any hope for them recognizing they're my twin flame and us completing this journey together? Or how would I pull someone out of that state and get them in the know about what's going on between the two of us here. No, what they think is irrelevant. What they do think they feel is irrelevant because that's all physical stuff. Remember, this journey takes place on the level of the soul. And it takes only one twin flame to do the work for both twin flames because essentially what you're doing is you're neutralizing the polarities. Envision your soul as a shared energetic field. Well, when you have the push-pull going on, it's polarized. But one twin flame, there just needs to be a depolarization of either the push or the pull. And then they're both depolarized because by definition with polarity, you need two poles, right? So if you take away one pole, the push, then the pull automatically neutralizes as well. And then when that happens, the soul can then bring its two physical bodies back together without the push pull effect going on. What does that look like? I mean, what are the practical steps there? What are the ramifications of that here in the physical when that sort of thing is going on? This push pull thing. I mean, I talk a lot about masculinity and femininity, and that sounds a lot like flirting and banter. Like, you know, I like you, maybe I don't, I'm going to give you attention then I'm going to take it away. So that's the vernacular we use to talk about that phenomenon. And I sense what you're talking about is dramatically different in terms of how it actually plays out in real life. And that's what I'm trying to get at. Sure. So one twin flame is the push energy. One is the pull energy, right? And they can never switch back and forth with each other. They're always one is the same one's the push, the same one's the pull. Well, what do pushers do and what do pullers do? Generally speaking, and you know, the way it manifests physically is completely unique and individual for everyone, by the way. It's as individual as their DNA or a fingerprint. But what's going on energetically is exactly the same. But generally speaking, what the push twin flame does is they become obsessive obsessive about the pull twin flame. They can't focus on anything else. They remember they have this core wound pain going on. They're they're just mired in a lot of fear-based energy, which could mean fear, but it could, fear-based energy is any really kind of um surface feelings and emotions caused by um thoughts. So the push twin flame is the one feeling the fear-based energy or manifesting the fear-based side of the soul first. And that draws them to the other person. I would think it would be the opposite. I would think the fear would be the pull, not the push. No, no, no. They're both fear. Push and pull are both fear. So all polarized energy is fear. The thing is, so the push energy is, it's fear, it's addictive, it's pushing onto that physical form of the pull twin flame. At the same time, the pull twin flame, because of the energy, is pulling away from the push twin flame, but it's still fear-based addictive energy. And so they have this addiction they feel like they need to satisfy. They can't turn around and do it with the push twin flame because the energy is pulling them away. So they have to go and try to satisfy this addiction with anyone and anything else. 
right? So they turn to, I mean, anything can be addictive, let's face it, but a lot of times they turn to, you know, alcohol, drugs, um, you know, overworking, they immediately go into other relationships or they hop around from relationship to relationship, you know, that's what they're doing. They try to go anywhere and do anything other than focus back on the push twin flame. So that's how that, that plays out. So if I have a stalker and they're creeping me out, could that be my twin flame trying to get through to me? Uh, no, not all. No, you can't generally say that. Well, that's what I, it sounds like to me. I mean, you'd have some, do you know them? I mean, you'd have some kind of interaction with them where, you know, you felt some kind of pull towards them at first, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, it feels like they're suffocating you. It's not like they're, it's dangerous. It's not fear. Like you have to get away from them because they're crazy. It's just, it feels like, oh, their energy almost smothers you. So you feel almost like you need to just get away, like for, to breathe. Like it's just very overpowering onto the pull twin flame like that. Oh, you're making it sound like this sucks. Where's the magic here? <laughs> Why would I want to meet my twin flame? This sounds exactly. just brutal and savage. Because once you learn how to balance out the push pull, we call it balance out, but you're actually neutralizing it. You're it's and in the whole process of doing that, it's a beautiful process. You're learning about yourself and you eventually can the way you have to relate with your twin flame then is is in complete fearlessness, which is total love. And as much as we like to say we have unconditional love with people um, right now, we don't where the level of human consciousness is because it's always there's always fear-based energy going on there. We're just not at that level of human consciousness yet to have a completely fearless relationship with anyone. In order to be total love, there has to be fearless because fear and love are opposites. They cannot coexist. They're mutually exclusive. Which I believe and which we've talked about in depth on this show, by the way. Okay, great. So I'm right there with you on this. Okay. okay, great. So basically, so basically your twin flames out there <laughs> cracking their knuckles and saying, yeah, I'll teach you how to turn that fear into love. <laughs> right? And you're doing the same for them. Yes. Yes. They both have a role to play. And right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a balancing out of each other's negative energy with that polarized positive energy. So it's kind of like the completion of the yin yang circle. Yes. It is very much like that. Wow. I'm getting it. You are. Yeah. Okay. I'm not as dumb as I look. This is great. <laughs> All right. So are there any supernatural elements to this relationship that offer kind of a hint like, hey, stupid, this is your twin flame. And here's why I ask. There was once a woman I was sort of dating, but not really. And we had a very interesting relationship. I didn't want to be romantic with her. She was gorgeous. Everybody didn't know why I didn't want to be romantic with her. But she was very drawn to me, kind of like in a sapiosexual way. She just found my energy very attractive. And I enjoyed spending time with her. And I have to underscore this. She was a beautiful woman, gorgeous, but not my type. I have a very different type. She's more of the classic tall, leggy, model-looking gal. Okay, And I like cute little spunky chicks like my wife. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So we were spending time together and we would be like alone in a room, just talking and getting to know each other and being fascinated. And there was one time where we both just ducked because some energy flew right over us while we were having a deep conversation. And we looked at each other and went, what was that? And then shortly thereafter, she said to me, you know, I had the strangest dream last night. And I said, wait, you mean this dream? And I proceeded to describe it to her. And I said, yeah, and you were in trouble. And she responded, yes, and you rescued me. And I woke up and I looked at the clock and it was, I don't remember the exact time, 2.28 in the morning. She's like, yeah, me too. Is that twin flame stuff? Or is that just some other completely supernatural, weird phenomena that happens between men and women that we should save for another show? Yeah, that's that can happen with, with anyone. That's not okay. necessarily twin flames. Well, it's only ever happened with her, but she most certainly was not my future wife. I've had people say, oh, you should have married her. I said, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so to this day, I'm still confused and rocked by it. But yeah, that's uh, that was interesting, but not twin flame. That doesn't necessarily mean you were twin flames. No, that's kind of a relief, actually. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, but how did you feel? After, I mean, are you still in contact with her when you stopped contact? Like, how did that go down? You know, that that would be more of an indication that could tell you more if you're twin flames. You know, like I said, did you have poor wound pain? Did you have obsessive thoughts? Or were you the pull where you couldn't even think about her anymore or like, you know, even talk to her anymore? You felt smothered by her, you know? 
Well, I think if I had to choose, it was the latter. I mean, frankly, I got a girlfriend. <laughs> so there were no late night conversations in our bedroom together anymore because, you know, that was kind of verboten after the girlfriend came along. But yeah, you know, I caught up with her on Facebook years later and it was kind of like, well, how are you doing? Fine, you know, and but not much. You know, I don't think it was either end of that spectrum where I felt smothered and wanted to get away from her or she was obsessed trying to chase me down. It just sort of ran its course. Yeah, right. Naturally. Yeah, a soulmate of some sort, you know, just one yeah. thing or another. <laughs> Interesting. What would you tell these guys if they have just been engrossed in fascination with this conversation and want to perhaps embark upon this journey in hopes of finding their twin flame? And, you know, I'm asking this question knowing it's probably already the wrongheaded approach. So straighten me out. Yeah. What should we do here? What's the practical step having listened to this show? The only practical step I would say anyone, if anyone's resonating with either of those two things, like they are the push twin flame, they have their partner or whatever, girlfriend, someone they were, you know, relating with pulled away suddenly, left them feeling um, like focused on them. They can't, they can't really focus on other things, hard to concentrate at work or anything else. You know, they have some kind of core wound pain. And by pain, again, it could be anything from like a fluttering or tightening to actual disembowelment feeling in their heart, solar plexus or sacral chakra. You know, if, if they're going through that, they can't just, they just can't move on or stop thinking about an X. I would say then they want to, um, you know, really consider that they could be experiencing a twin flame journey. Yeah. But what if we feel that way about every chick who dumps us? Okay. Well, do you, are you, I mean, you have core wound pain with every chick that dumps you? Well, Hey, I'm more speaking on behalf of the listeners in general, rather than attempting to employ the royal we, right? You know, yeah. me personally, I'm good. That's you know, I'm married. happily married and all my exes are, <laughs> you know, and all my exes live in Texas. You know, it's basically how it went for me. I mean, I'm, I'm good here. But I know a lot of guys struggle with, you know, kind of falling for a woman. Uh, maybe she's someone they've had to admire from afar, you know, someone that they got what's called one-itis for who never really requited that love. Or, you know, they have a pattern where they start dating a woman and get all obsessed and the woman goes, ick, you're getting too obsessed. They get dumped and the guy is just really obsessive. <laughs> and this happens over and over again because they don't fix that core wound or, in my estimation, that character flaw that keeps them going back for more and getting flattened time and time again by what happens in these relationships. I mean, obviously it's kind of a sign of immaturity. You know, we fall in love with our eighth grade girlfriend and get obsessive over her. And then when she dumps us, Oh my God, it's the worst thing that ever happened until we find a new one. And you know, it's kind of a puppy love thing, but yeah. some guys do carry that pattern into adulthood. So when we hear you saying, okay, here are the signs you may be dealing with a twin flame. And then you couple that concept with the fact that there really is only one twin flame for you ever. I think some guys are probably still confused. Okay. Well, I, I hope not. I'm not trying to be confusing, but you raise a good point. Yes, you can get obsessive over other other people that aren't your twin flame for sure. But see, it's different. It's to a different level with this. I just, I just can't even describe it. It's to where you can't even function. There's no like moving on, you know, as soon as you get over them, as soon as like, you know, you get on somebody else. It's not, it's not like that. <laughs> you know, there is no getting on someone else. So this has to be a truly special, unique situation where even you and your heart of hearts go, you know what, this is over the top. Why am I feeling like this? This isn't like me. This isn't something that typically goes on in my life. Right, right. right. Okay, got it. It causes you not even to recognize yourself anymore. I mean, it's really beyond anything. Um, and it needs to be that way because it is a soul awakening. It's your soul's wake up call to you. And if it was just felt like everything else, you wouldn't really pay much attention. You'd just be like, oh, whatever, next. Okay. Yeah, it, you know, you know, it's different from when any way you've ever been before. Okay, that's crystal clear. I got it. Okay, so what's the culmination of all this? What is the end game for Twin Flame? Well, there, well, there is no end game because the soul doesn't end. It's eternal. When is it that the pain stops and the fun starts? Okay. That's what I'm getting at. Well, it's a process dealing with, well, first of all, you need to deal with the obsession. You need to get out of your mind. You need to stop focusing on their Twin Flame because all the focus on them is what's pushing them away. You know, you focus on them, your energy pushes out there, and then they're on the other end of that energy pulling away. 
So really the main goal initially is to stop focusing on them, to get out of your head, to stop the obsessive thoughts. And you basically do that by um, trying to be present as much as possible, you know, realizing that seeing your thoughts and realizing that, you know, they're not real, that your mind is just many times making stuff up about your twin flame. Almost like your logical mind is flat out rebelling against the polarized nature of your soul. Yes. Oh, yes. That's exactly what happens. See, because the fear-based energy, like all energy, it just wants to grow and expand. I mean, that's its natural inclination. But what we're, what you're doing when you're when you're balancing it out, which is what we call it, you're actually shrinking it. Because remember, you're alchemizing it and it's being transmuted into love energy. So the fear is shrinking down and getting smaller. And that goes against the natural inclination of all energy, which is to grow and expand. So then the pot of gold here at the end of the rainbow is self-discovery. Between both twin flames, right? Yeah. Well, the pull twin flame doesn't really do much of the self-discovery work. I mean, they do. I mean, and everyone, every day of their lives is learning more and more and growing every, you know, every minute and every moment. We all are, right? Whether we're on the twin flame journey or not. But, you know, it's really the push twin flame that does that kind of quote unquote work because they're the ones that come looking for the help because they're the ones who are out there Googling, like, why do I feel like crap? How do I get my ex back? All this other stuff. And they come across twin flames when they're, when they're meant to when they're ready. And um, they're the ones that do the work. And again, like I said, though, it only takes one twin flame to do the work for both. So what's in it for the other one? Oh, for the pull twin flame? Yeah. I mean, again, what is the good that comes out of this? How am I a better person for having found my twin flame? And how is my twin flame a better person for having found me? Oh, because, okay, well, you know, once you do balance out the energies, you could be in a completely fearless unconditional love relationship should you want to. But really what happens is when you're alchemizing the fear-based energy, the push is doing it for both. And when that happens, first of all, you're shifting closer into alignment with your soul, which is your true vibration of love. And when that happens, your soul is your truth. And it includes um, that energy is the strongest energy that exists next to source energy. So it includes love. It includes peace, happiness, abundance, your passions, your true soul's purpose, it's all tied into that. And the closer you shift into it, even incrementally, everything in your outside world, in your physical world, in your life starts to change. And so you start magnetizing in people, situations, opportunities, things that start resonating and being more in alignment with your truth, which is, you know, all those amazing things I just described. And your twin flame and you did this for each other. Yes. Yes. Okay. And yeah, so both Twin Flames lives, they become less fear-based and more more aligned with their truth, which is everything they desire. So one last question before we wrap up. You mentioned that Twin Flames are all about the soul, not physicality. But there is a decidedly romantic, sexually interested twist to this. So my question is, must your twin flame necessarily align with your sexual orientation? No, not at all. Okay. So my twin flame could be another dude, even though I'm straight. Right. Okay. Man, would that get confusing? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another reason, you know, you met your twin flame when, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the large age difference is very common. That's also another common thing. Um, same sex when neither one have been gay before. Also, another very common um, thing is where they live on opposite ends of the world. They never meet in person. They just meet online, like in chat rooms or whatever, but they still feel that pull towards like this faceless name or, or screen name or whatever. And they go through the same whole, you know, push pull thing. Um, and also different religions where that matters and a lot of um, cultures that matters. And so people would normally not think to be in a relationship with someone who's a different religion, but twin flames can't help themselves. Oftentimes one or both twin flames are married or in, you know, long-term relationships with other people where they How would never- spouses handle that sort of thing? Well, I mean, not well, usually. You know? I can only imagine. Yeah. But I mean, the thing is, once you have the push-pull energies balanced, it just gives you freedom. You you have many options. So you don't have to be in a physical relationship with your twin flame at that point. And we have half of our students that, who are married before they meet their twin flames and go through all this. Once they're balanced, they're able to go and have an even closer more uh, true and real relationship with their spouses and keep their families intact and everything. So it opens up, it's liberating. It's a liberating, amazing journey once you get that fear-based energy balanced. Well, I would imagine, you know, thinking along as you were talking, that if I'm married to my soulmate and I get in touch with my twin flame later, it would follow logically that my twin flame and my soulmate would also get along, ultimately if they can get through all the baggage. 
I mean, at prima facie, they should get along based on how this all works, shouldn't they? On the soul level, yes, because they are, yeah, soulmates, <laughs> right? Because yeah, you're because you are right, right. exactly. Yes, on a soul level, ideally, yes, when there's no fear-based energy. But see, the spouse, even if the twin flames have no fear-based energy with each other, they still have it with everything and everyone else because everyone is is interacting with everyone in fear-based push-pull energy, believe it or not. We just don't know. It's on a subconscious level. Um, but if you look at the planet and you just look at it like on an energetic level, it looks like one big spider web or matrix of energy. Everything and everyone is interconnected through energy. Right, even if they're not the same energetic vibration, which would be the same soul, only twin flames share that with each other. But still, there's parts of of everyone's energy that's mingling with everyone else's energy at all times. I think this is all incredibly fascinating, and I'm so glad that you're doing all this wonderful work because Thanks. I'm a pragmatic smartass, such that I am. Mm -hmm. I can't help but think of Pete Weber. Do you know who Pete Weber is? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Pete Weber is a pro bowler who is a very good bowler, but he's most famous for winning a bowling tournament and shouting at the top of his lungs, who do you think you are? I am pointing to himself. And of course, it's a total Yogi Berraism of sorts because it makes no sense unless you're talking to your twin flame. And suddenly it makes perfect sense to say that, doesn't it? Yes. Absolutely. What a that great place to end this show. <laughs> bringing it full circle back to the pragmatism these guys are used to. Well, I think your work is wonderful. And I want to point these guys to this book of yours where I think, <laughs> well, let's put it this way. We've really only scratched the surface here because this is obviously a very deep subject. So guys, if you want to go get your copy of El Hari's book, Twin Flames Exposed, you can do so on Amazon. And I will point you to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash L-E-L-L-E -L -L -E to get your copy of that. I'll also put the book at the top of my queue on my Amazon influencer page, which you can reach by going to mountaintoppodcast.com front slash Amazon. El Hari, thank you so much for not only visiting with us today, but being so smart about this. Obviously, it's something that you're immersed in and are passionate about. And thank you so much for putting up with all of my uh, newbie questions. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Scott. This was so much fun. Good. I'm glad you had fun. And guys, listen, if you haven't checked out our sponsors yet, Origin in Maine and Hero Soap, go to mountaintoppodcast.com and click on the links you'll find there and use Mountain 10 to get 10% off any purchase you make from either of those fine companies. And while you're there, listen, some of you guys are like, man, twin flame, soulmate, I would just like to get a date. I'd just like to start meeting women where there are none right now. Hey, we can take care of that for you. We can also get you on the road to finding the right woman in your life. It all starts with a 25-minute phone call with me personally, which you can arrange by going to mountaintoppodcast.com and clicking on the red button in the upper right-hand corner. And until I talk to you again real soon, this is Scott McKay from X and Y Communications in San Antonio, Texas. Be good out there. <laughs> The Mountaintop Podcast is produced by X and Y Communications. All rights reserved worldwide. Be sure to visit www.mountaintoppodcast.com for show notes. And while you're there, sign up for the free X and Y Communications newsletter for men. This is Ed Roy Odom speaking for The Mountaintop Podcast.